Hey guys, welcome back to All in On Law. In this video today, we're going to talk about what are the precautions we should take. Precautions, prevention, and treatment, and treatment of Ebola, Ebola virus disease or Ebola virus what you call hemorrhagic fever right guys so recently there has been what you call the outbreak in some parts of uh, South Africa especially in uh, Liberia, Guinea, Sierra Leone and some parts of Nigeria in the previous videos we discussed how this Ebola virus is transmitted from animals to human and from human to human and if you know the transmission very well then you can watch you prevent this disease affecting you why this this is has become a very important because of epidemics second and because we don't have no what you call vaccines right now as of now we don't have the vaccines so we manage what you call the only with the symptoms supportive management we give to the patient that's it and it has a what you call a high mortality rate up to 50 to 90 percent look at this high mortality it's a really very high okay guys so once what happens the Ebola outbreak begins the effect of virus can be devastating remember and uh, okay since there is a no Ebola cure once the person develops an Ebola virus infection chances of death can be as high as 90 percent Okay, and we don't have the vaccine also. That has that's why this topic has become what you call uh, really very interesting, and we have to know m many more things about it to prevent this and prevent our friends, prevent our family. Okay, right. So try to know very well about this. What are the what you call a preventive measures you can take or precautions? Okay, remember first how it is transmitted. Okay, from human to human. It is by two. One is through either by the blood or the bodily fluids. The bodily fluids. Bod bodily fluids like we have what you call your sweat, right? saliva, semen, conjunctival or even airborne cannot be ruled out but as of now there is no what you call the the, the, the what you call the evidence whether the this virus can spread through the airborne okay guys so sweat saliva semen conjunctival or any other body secretions can cause this virus shedding and cause an infection once the patient gets infected within two days or to three weeks he can present with the sign and symptoms of Ebola virus disease in the previous video we discussed how this Ebola virus causes the injury to the various important organs of the body right guys right so that's really very very important okay since there is no Ebola vaccine currently licensed the Ebola prevention focuses on preventing the direct contact with these body fluids what I told you that's a sweat saliva semen conjunctiva conjunctival secretions okay and another aspect of preventing this what you call uh, the Ebola virus is avoiding direct contact with the body of an Ebola victim who has died as a result of the virus okay so these are really very important precautions so try to what you call wash your hands repeatedly don't come in contact with any bodily secretions okay take care okay and if you are a healthcare professional or you're working in a hospital then what are the precautions you should take is you should know that there should be what you call the infection control measures that is a sterilization of the equipments complete sterilization of the equipments is really very important okay complete sterilization of the equipments okay and isolation of the patients with this Ebola virus disease or hemorrhagic fever from the contact with the unprotected people the, pe the, the, the person who has been infected with this virus should be isolated from the other what you call the patients like a patients of cardiac patients patients of what you call the, the um, 
the the gi patients right so you should be you should isolate them and being a doctor or a healthcare professional you should take care of yourself by wearing what you call protective clothing such as mask gloves gowns and the goggles okay you can wear masks gloves gowns and goggles right guys and these are really very very important which you have to do right guys this is really really very very important and if you talk about the treatment how do you treat it as i said there's no vaccine available right now no vaccine has been licensed okay no vaccine no vaccine that's why we have to treat it what you call as a supportive management means if the patient is infected with this virus what we have to do is if give the fluids the normal saline okay maintain the electrolytes avoid the dehydration by giving the fluids okay maintain the electrolytes okay give what you call anticoagulants to prevent what you call the dic right antibiotics to prevent what you call secondary infection due to the bacteria because this ebola virus causes what you call decrease in the immune system once the immune system is decreased the chances of what you call the the bacteria growing is very high so we give antibiotics also really very important okay guys and for a pain you can give what you call the acetaminophen okay and for you have to manage the pain also right and other signs and symptoms what the patient is presenting you can what you call um, do that right guys so this is really really very important about uh, the ebola virus since as i said again and again there's no vaccine as of now okay so repeat and as a doctor washing hands are really very important repeatedly wash the hands so that the fluid should not any body what you call bodily fluid should not come in contact with you guys okay and um, you can try with you know an iv fluids can be given or if he's drinking is taking very well then he can give oral rehydration therapy all right guys um these are the what you call important uh, part of what you call uh, important information about the ebola virus and another thing that if the animal can be infected with these so try to what you call these uh, what you call isolate these animals okay um this is really very important and the most important that uh, the natural host of this ebola virus is uh, uh, what you call um, this uh, uh, fruit fruit bat and this is very prevalent in what you call south african countries like guinea sierra leone liberia and nigeria okay so thank you so much for watching this video i'm sure you got an idea and what you call another thing i forgot to tell you the semen uh, can be infected one of infected person can transmit this virus up to 60 days some says for the longer period but remember so if there is any sexual intercourse during this period it can transmit this virus to the uh, female or sexual partner and she can be get infected with that okay guys so uh, thank you so much for watching this video i'm sure you got an idea about this uh, try to take care of yourself and try to pass on this message to your friends your family your loved ones okay guys so thank you so much take care